Hello everyone, my name is Noah and welcome to this painting process video. Today I'm going to be talking about my latest piece, Parent Earth. So this painting was something new for me. It is really different from what I usually paint because usually I paint houses or objects, I don't paint people. And I also almost always create line art with a pen and I don't sketch on the watercolor paper itself. But I decided that I wanted to do something different. And for that something different, I wanted to paint bigger. So I bought a nine by 12 paper, but ended up trimming the finished illustration down to an eight by 10 in the end. So it's really not any bigger, but it was fun to get to experiment with bigger paper. So I was inspired by the Scars, Stretch Marks, and Dimples art gallery show that Sanctuary Art here in Pittsburgh is hosting from February 5th until March 13th. This piece is on display there as well as many others by other talented and incredible artists here in Pittsburgh, and it is for sale. The design of this painting is based on the common portrayal of Mother Earth as a cis woman whose pregnant belly is portrayed as the planet Earth itself, while the rest of her is usually nature inspired as well. I was tired of seeing the earth portrayed in a way that it only connected it to one small group of people, that being cis women who can and want to give birth. So I decided to create a version of this interpretation of earth as a sacred parent that more reflected who I am as a person. Obviously, this one painting doesn't really reflect many possible instances of humans reflected and related to the earth. And I would like to see how other people have done these interpretations or will do, or perhaps I will do other interpretations. I don't want to suggest that my interpretation is a universal interpretation that is so much better than the classic interpretation that I was inspired by. Rather, I would like to create this as an alternative option. So like I said, I was sketching on the watercolor paper itself because I wanted to do a more lineless and painterly style. So I started by sketching out the body and I spent some time finding reference images as well, which you can see if you check the links in the description of this video, you will see a Pinterest board with various different references. And I did use a cis woman for the body sitting and um, the pregnant belly just because I find it's not that common to find um, trans men or non-binary individuals who are pregnant um, portrayed online, although I did find some references which I used later on for some of the details. I tried to keep in mind who this person was, this, this being that I was representing the earth through. Um, I did take a lot of aspects from my own person, but I do not consider this myself. It is not a self-insert or it is not me as the earth. Um, for example, I do not have top surgery, so the scars that I drew in as mountains don't exist on my body. But for example, I do have an undercut, which I tried to portray with the hair and the clouds, although that did come out looking more like a explosion of thought coming out of their mind, which I am okay with it being interpreted as. Obviously, I don't have a choice um, as how people interpret it. That's up to them. I also, you will see later, I draw a scar on the Earth's leg. I did cut myself on that leg um, when I was a teenager, but I don't have a visible scar anymore. But yes, so I drew it out on paper and then erased most of it. The paper, if you're interested, is Arches um, Cold Press 300 GSM. And like I said, it's a 9 by 12 pad. I'm using my Da Vinci Earth Friendly color palette, um, which I thought was a appropriate for this piece, considering this is about the Earth. I also did use an M Graham palette that was given to me by a friend, Taylor. Um, They're so kind, they've given me different samples of paints and small travel palettes that they don't use anymore over the years. And I didn't have a good Payne's Gray in this palette that I was using this main one, so I decided that I wanted to use the Payne's Gray in that palette because I love me a good Payne's Gray. And the first section that I tackled was the clouds. I kind of worked in a top-down manner, and I found it really challenging because I have never painted clouds before. Not like this. 
Um, and I also found it really challenging because I wasn't really drawing out all the little details in the sketch. I did a very like vague guidelines for me to follow. So I really relied heavily on different reference images and thinking about what I know about how other people have painted clouds. Um, actually the artist here on YouTube drawing with waffles, Rin, she has painted clouds a few times and I tried to remember what I had seen in the videos that she had posted about it and it actually did really help me. So I wanted to include lightning um, and storm clouds and then a sunset just because that really warm red color wasn't going to be portrayed in many places in this piece. So I just I wanted to bring that color diversity in just because there are so many colors on earth on our planet and just with the animals and whatnot. And since there weren't going to be any animals in this picture, I wanted some other way to bring in those colors. And then I used the Payne's Gray to create space around, um, around the person. It's kind of, it's not really a part of earth, but the atmosphere, obviously everything, the space within the atmosphere is technically part of earth. So it is kind of a part of earth, but it's not. So I thought having it kind of fading off of their hair or off this inspiration thoughts would be a good way to represent it. And I did initially plan on creating lots of stars in this space, but in the end, I really thought that just the dark sky was, was plenty striking. So I left it as it was. And then the hair, the shaved hair or the shorter hair on either side of the undercut was supposed to be I thought maybe it would be sky but then I decided I wanted it to be the deep dark ocean where it's so deep and there's no light and all those creepy fishies are like the angler fish so this is the deepest darkest ocean in my mind and then you'll see as we paint the face it gets lighter and lighter um I did decide that for any hair on the body it was going to be um vegetation like plants so the hair on the face is seaweed or kelp or anything, you know, plants that grow under the sea. So that was the interpretation for that. The body hair, which we will get to in a little while, um, other than what's on the face, like arm hair, leg hair, hair on the torso is just supposed to be grasses or trees, depending on the area and the biome that it's in. So you can see that here I am painting in a lighter, um, brighter blue and this is supposed to be I suppose shallower ocean and it's just you'll see I add darker blues on top of the lighter blues next to the hair just to create that sort of gradient from the deep deep ocean to the shallower oceans and I decided that any pimples or anything of the like on the face would be denoted by icebergs just because I thought that that would be interesting. And another instance of how I put my own experiences as a person being insecure about my body into this painting was I recreated acne on this person's face in places where I have had it throughout my childhood. I had a lot of acne across my forehead in a line and it was often called by bullies the Rocky Mountains. So I really, well, I don't, like I said, consider this person to be me. I thought it was important that I put things into it that I had actually experienced in my life because I am a person and I'm not the only person that has going to have experienced these things. Just there are so many humans in this world and we're all similar yet unique. So I thought that being genuine and honest with my experiences regarding my body would be a way to have this painting have more meaning, even if this person isn't supposed to be me. I'm painting in the top surgery scars and they are mountains. One thing I wanted with this painting was to really show height and depth with different parts of the body. I wanted the body to really look topographical, like a topographical map. How do I show mountains rising up? Well, I decided that I was going to give them snow on top and have them sort of fade depending on the different type and height. I wanted to show different aspects of our earth. I didn't want it to just represent one climate. So the upper torso and arms are the woodland forests, kind of the area where I live in Pennsylvania. So it is a forest that's a mix of trees that lose their leaves in the fall are called deciduous. And then coniferous are things like pine trees. So I decided that this part would be a mixture of forests like that and mountains 
And then as we transfer to the belly, it was going to be more of a plains area. The body hair on the arms and the chest, in my mind, are trees, forests. The different dots that I'm painting on are supposed to be just different blemishes, uh, maybe scars, um, freckles, moles, um, skin tags, which are something I have on my body. And they're just supposed to be boulders or rocks. I thought that would be a nice way to add some texture. So that was important to me to include that because like I said, I was trying to include things about my body that I had been made to feel insecure about over time. And then this aspect of the pregnant belly that I'm showing here is the linea negra. Derma Nett says that the linea negra is a physiological form of hyperpigmentation commonly seen in the first trimester of pregnancy. It is a dark vertical line that runs down the middle of the abdomen. It is also known as the pregnancy line. It occurs in 90% of pregnant people. This hyperpigmentation is prominent and more common in individuals with darker complexions compared to fair-skinned individuals. I wanted to include this because it is something that many individuals who are pregnant end up with, and as far as I know, it is not um, a danger to a body or anything like that, but it is something that someone might feel ashamed of. I also thought that it would translate nicely into a canyon, which was something that I originally considered making the stretch marks, but I was worried that it would be too much because stretch marks are far more common than this one specific line. I decided that the starting with like the pelvic area, the the groin, the legs were going to be rainforest and that created an excuse to create pubic hair, um, really thick and really dense to sort of preserve modesty and the ability to share this on the internet. That is another thing that especially AFAB individuals are taught is not okay. We need to shave ourselves. So adding this hair in and any area really, but especially in this way and creating it as something fertile and special because the rainforest is such a beautiful place, I thought was a nice way to counteract those shameful messages that our society has put out there for us. The stomach, like I said, is the grassy plain area and I wanted it to be sort of scrubland, but not a desert because I wanted the flow of the green across the body to be more gentle. I didn't want anything to be abrupt or significant or sudden. Um, that is one thing that I did not like with how the neck and the head connected to the torso. That was something that I wish I could have done better. But overall, I really thought that the transitions between the different green biomes, I suppose, really turned out well. And having hair on a pregnant belly is not something our society shows, um, but it's something anyone of any gender or even cisgender women can have. So I wanted to include it not only because of, you know, this person being a trans person and perhaps on testosterone, but it is something that's natural about humans in general. We have hair, we're mammals. And I added in the stretch marks as rivers simply because I thought that it could be an interesting way to share the sort of delta look um, of just an area of land full of rivers. And I included them not only on the belly because that's where we commonly think of stretch marks, but on the neck and shoulders and then on the torso because stretch marks can really happen on any part of a human's body and not just during pregnancy of a woman. I also included a river running down the canyon because in my mind I think of the Grand Canyon which has a river running through it. I also added stretch marks on the legs um, before I added in any of the foliage just because I wanted to make sure there was room for them before continuing and forgetting about them. Adding the scar to the leg, the mountain, um, like I mentioned, it is something that I experienced in my life. I fell down a hill when I was in high school and cut my leg open in this very similar way. I don't remember which leg it was, so it could have been the opposite leg, but I decided that there was too much green going on. It was all very much blending in. So I did decide to add the mountain without really thinking about the fact that I had experienced a scar in the same place and after, after the fact, I did think of that and think that that was interesting, that that was my first thought was to create a scar in the same way that I had had one. But overall, I, I think this might be actually one of my favorite parts of the painting. It just, it pops so well. So from like an artistic standpoint, it feels really 
really effective, but also I feel like I executed it very well. Um, it looks very much like a mountain. And the legs are really showing the rainforest in full. Um, like I said, it started in the groin area um, in the pelvis, but I wanted to really include it and continue it down the leg because obviously legs are sometimes the place where um, hair grows thickest other than on your head. So I really wanted to have thick furry leg hair and I wanted it to be something that, like I said before, is seen as beautiful. Like the rainforest is considered one of the most amazing places on earth, although there are so many beautiful places. And I did my best to paint around the stretch marks that I had created, although you will see they kind of blend in, which is okay. I wish they didn't, but in an area like that, unless the river is absolutely huge, I imagine the trees would block you from seeing it from above. To create some balance on both legs, I decided to include a larger river on the other leg, mirroring sort of the mountain on the opposite leg. And I think that this also helps the eye read this as crossed legs and know which way they're folded and all of that. I mainly did it so that there would be more stretch marks in areas other than just the belly. I wanted the legs to have them. I wanted them to be common. And I decided as I was painting the leg that I wanted to create the feet as a desert or arid area just to bring in another color, to bring that warm color down from the clouds and the sunset down to the other end of the painting as well to try and balance it out a bit. Painting the face was the hardest part and it was actually something that I didn't include all of because I started the face and then I turned the camera off because I was so horrified with how it turned out. Thankfully I just kept pushing. I went through the ugly teenager stage as it's often called and found that I was actually able to paint a face without any guidelines really and inking and all of that. I could create the shadows with just the paint. One thing that did help in the end though that I don't share until you're seeing the finished painting is I gave the individual eyebrows. I painted in actually coral reefs which make no sense next to the icebergs but I didn't want them to be the same thing as the icebergs and I didn't really want to include more facial hair in the same way simply because I wanted something varied and unique. So the face, like I said, was definitely the hardest part and the scariest part. But while I see things with it that aren't perfect and things that I would change, I do also think that it is incredibly exciting to have created a face in this technique because it is so different from what I've done before. And I am proud of it, which is really all I can hope for in a painting is to be proud of what I've done. And at least somewhat satisfied with it. So this is the finished painting. I'm very, very happy with it. Um, like I said, it's going to be on display and I am going to be eventually making prints of it. I'd love to hear what size you think would be good for it. And you can definitely see the finished face. So yes, th and yes, um, please be sure to like and subscribe and all that important things, hit that bell. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on the parent mother earth symbolism that is so common. So be sure to leave a comment down below. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.